And drama means something, not particular plays, but the entire form of drama. Chesterton, of course, saw this. And in his writings about drama and in his writings about other things, he tells us what drama means. Before we go to that, though, we need to talk about his great friend, another playwright, not quite as good as Chesterton, George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Don't hiss, Shaw. <laughs> We've got to give Shaw credit. He knew enough to love Chesterton as a man. He was wrong in his politics. He was wrong in his nihilism. He was wrong in his love for Nietzsche. He was wrong about many things in his love for power and will. He was the anti-Chesterton in many ways. But he was a good man and a man of humor and really one of the foremost dramatists in the English language. Shaw, of course, loved Chesterton and said of Chesterton that Chesterton was a hybrid superman, a grand transmogrifier of ideas, a tremendous talent who was nonetheless a great force in danger of being wasted. Now, why did Shaw think that Chesterton's talents were in danger of being wa wasted? Because Chesterton was not writing plays. GBS pestered GKC for years to become a playwright, as the following letter from Shaw to Chesterton demonstrates. Shaw writes to Chesterton on March 1st, 1908, that if Gilbert does not become a playwright, he, Shaw, will begin an inauguration of an assault below the belt. Shaw writes that he will stop at nothing to convince Chesterton to become a dramatist, not even dirty tricks. And since Shaw was Irish, I'm going to read with an Irish accent. Shaw writes to Chesterton, I shall deliberately destroy your credit as an essayist, as a journalist, as a critic, as a liberal, as everything that offers your laziness as a refuge until starvation and shame drive you to serious dramatic parturition. I shall repeat my public challenge to you. Vaunt my superiority. Insult your corpulence. Torture Belloc. If necessary, call on you and steal your wife's affections <laughs> by intellectual and athletic displays. <laughs> Shaw was 62 at the time. <laughs> Until you contribute something to the English drama, you are played out as an essayist. Chesterton was 33. <laughs> your ardor is soddened. Your intellectual substance crumbled. By the attempt to keep up the work of your 20s in your 30s. Nothing can save you now except rebirth as a dramatist. I have done my turn and now I call on you to take yours and do a man's work. Shaw also went so far to write to Mrs. Chesterton, <laughs> telling Francis, I want to read a play to Gilbert. I want to insult and taunt and stimulate Gilbert with it. It is the sort of thing he could write and ought to write, a religious harlequinade. In fact, he could do it better if a sufficient number of pins were stuck into him. <laughs> My proposal is that I read the play to him on Sunday or at the next convenient date and that you, Francis, fall into transports of admiration for it. <laughs> Declare that you can never love a man who cannot write things like that. And definitely announce that if Gilbert has not finished a worthy successor to it before the end of the third week next ensuing, you, Francis, will go out like the lady in a doll's house and live your own life, whatever that dark threat may mean. Chesterton finally accepted the challenge and wrote not only a play, but a hit play. 
Chesterton's Magic, written in 1913, enjoyed a run of 165 performances in London's East End, as well as a run on Broadway in 1917 and a Broadway revival in 1942. We have a sense, for example, that the man who was Thursday is way too brilliant for the form that attempts to contain it. We have the sense, especially with Chesterton's novels and plays, that the forms almost cry out, our cups runneth over. Chesterton is so big, despite what Gare says. He is so metaphorically huge that many art forms cannot contain him.